The Texas Longhorns got a huge bounce back win at Kansas State, a top 15 ranked Kansas State team, 34 to 27. The line going into this game was two and a half favoring the Longhorns. So going into it even felt a little bit like, hey, does somebody know something? I don't know if anybody really knew anything, but Texas just handled business in the Little Apple, a tough place to play, and there's a lot to jump into with this game. The first thing I want to hit on, Nick, Brake, and I were talking before we hit record on this whole thing, and everybody's going to be quick to say, well, is Texas back? Is Texas not back? There is such a thing as in the middle, right? Like, you don't have to always be the definitive back or not back. It's year two under Steve Sarkeesian. It's allowed to process a little bit, right? It's Quinn Ewer's first year in the saddle. You can kind of wait to see what this whole thing ends up being. But the reality is, whether you're back or not back, the reality is you got a huge win on the road and a tough place to play against a top 15 ranked team who had just a, a statement win in a lot of ways the week before, absolutely throttling an Oklahoma State team that you lost to in Stillwater. And one of the things that we were looking at coming off last week for Texas, or I guess two weeks ago after they lost to Oklahoma State, was what's going to happen to this program? Where's the culture at? What, how, how is Quinn Ewers going to respond? I think that was the first thing I was looking at was Quinn Ewers went on the road, tough outing, had 30 incompletions. What would he do in response to that kind of game? Well, I think the first thing I would say is Quinn Ewers cashed in enough in this game. Was he perfect? No, 18 for 30, 197 yards, zero interceptions, two touchdowns. He made the plays that you needed to win this game. And I want to make sure we set the table appropriately for Quinn Ewers because he came in with so much hype, so much expectations. I mean, borderline unreachable in some sense of the word. Like he's done a great job as the starting quarterback for them. He's been a leader in a lot of, you know, uh, allowed them to do so many things offensively, but it's still his first start. And so a lot of people are expecting Quinn Ewers to just be the game breaker for you in Austin. And he may be in some games. In that Red River rivalry game, he absolutely balled out. He may eventually be that game breaker for you. What you need him to be, though, right now is the closer. And you know what I'm talking about. When it's crunch time, when you need a play, when you need to get that first down or you need to score in the red zone, you just need him to be able to be the closer when money's on the table. And yesterday, Bijan Robinson teed it up in a big way. Let me just read the stat line. <clears throat> 30 carries, 209 yards. Folks, when you have 30 carries and you average seven yards a carry, that's video game-like. I mean, that is just the whole way this offense operates. Steve Sarkeesian runs the run-pass option, meaning when Bijan Robinson gets going, there will be money on the table for the passing game. And Quinn Ewers, like we said, cashed in enough, but he cashed in because of what Bijan Robinson brought to the table on the ground. The offensive line did a great job. The perimeter blocking was solid. This Texas team, I'm telling you, they have an edge. Defensively, you answered the call to action. Was it a perfect game? Absolutely not. 468 yards total allowed. Secondary's got issues. I mean, they allowed over 300 yards to a good quarterback in Adrian Martinez. They've got some stuff to clean up. There's a couple of things that just didn't bounce their way. The ball was on the turf a couple of times for them, and they didn't recover it. Some of that you say you got to control the, the fact to try to recover it. Some of it's, you know, the ball just didn't bounce your way. Not here to talk about that. I just think it's impressive that they were able to do enough to fight off the surge of momentum coming from Kansas State at the end of the game and make enough plays to get out of there with a win. Again, was it clean? Was it perfect? Are you saying, wow, the defense is the strength of our program today? No. But you found a way to win against an offense that really is pretty lethal. With Deuce Vaughn and Adrian Martinez, that could have been a lot worse than 27 points, to say the least. They, they didn't finish the game you want to. You know that the second half wasn't nearly as impressive as you would have hoped when they had control going into the second half. But a win's a win. You'd much rather fix your mistakes in a win than you would in a loss. So... What this told me about Texas as a program, this was a gritty win off of the bye week, off of a game you had just lost in a lot of ways, a pretty ugly fashion. We talked about that game a lot. A lot of money was left on the table in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And so once you lose a game in that kind of fashion and have one whole bye week, a whole seven days to recalibrate, yes, you have a chance to fix your mistakes. What people don't 
notice quite as much is that whole bye week, you know what you have a lot of time to do? Have a lot of time to talk. Have a lot of time to point fingers and say it was his fault. No, it was his fault. Well, this coach doesn't know what he's doing. Internally, the opportunity for that to happen is pretty large. And it would have been very easy for this Texas team to just say, you know what? Old Texas, I'm out of here. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to do things my way. I'm going to hit the portal, whatever. Like that could have been the way this thing went. And we've seen Texas teams in the past. That's been their MO. One loss turns to three, turns to four, turns to five, turns to bad deal. For them to get up off the mat, to go again to the little apple against a ranked opponent and have the game they did and show the fight they did, I think it shows a lot of maturation from this team, shows a lot of grit from this team, and it shows the progress that is still underway in Austin, Texas under Steve Sarkeesian. So is it a finished product? Of course not. Is Texas back? How do you want to define back? Do you define back playing competitive football? Do you find back as a Big 12 title, as a national title? Like, that's really up to you to talk about for Texas being back. But I will say this. The Texas that we saw yesterday was a different brand than the old Texas that would have packed it in, pointed fingers, and crumbled from the inside out. So to get a win, 34-27, it's a lot in front of them right now. The Big 12 title, they got to win out probably. Not probably, they do need to win out. The margin for victory, margin for error is, is very, very small. Margin for victory being greater is probably something you'd like to see if you're a Texas fan, but all that's to say, good things are continuing to build in Austin, Texas. I'm J.D. Pacquiao. This has been the hard count. Nick Brake does everything you see here, the real heavy lifting, but you can help drive this whole operation by subscribing to the channel. We have had a ton of of you Texas Longhorn faithful, join the party and subscribe. We thank you. We love you for that. Second thing, if you haven't already joined the party, you're a Texas fan, jump on in. The water's fine. So we're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.